Hi YouTube, I'm Mahesh and I'm gonna tell you my story on how I got a 521 as a mediocre student. I truly believe anyone can get a high score on the MCAT and it's like, yeah, it's just reachable by everybody. And so I'm gonna first start off by just the commonly made mistakes that people make. And I would say the biggest one and just the one that hurts you the most is that people for the first month, they'll do content review and they'll just basically be reading the book passively along. And then by the end of the month, they forget everything. And then the second month comes along and they're like, all right, time to start questions. And when they do the questions, they literally forget all of the content. And so they find that they're gonna have to go back through all the content they just read and it's just a waste of time. And so like what I'm suggesting is that you do both at the same time. So you do like one little section of content review and then you do questions that are based off the content you just reviewed. I'm now gonna get into um, what my average day looked like because that's another commonly asked question that I do get. And so I generally started off with just some content review. I use Khan Academy personally and I would just watch some videos and I took notes in my Anki app, which is a flashcard app if you don't know what that is. And then after that, I would do questions related to the content I reviewed, and I usually do UWorld for that. And then after that, I would review the Anki cards that I made, and also previous Anki cards that I made. And um, yeah, I'll explain further what Anki is, and like what UWorld, and like what content review you should use. But just to start it off, that's like generally what my day looked like. So I'm now going to get into like the beef of the video and like what I use and like what you should do to get a good score in the MCAT. And so to start off, I'm going to talk about content. And so there's so many ways you can go about this. And honestly, don't get trapped into like one way you have to do to get a good score. Because I use multiple forms of content review like off of like online, books, videos to eventually get to my end score. And so I would recommend that maybe you look at the Kaplan books, the Princeton books, the Exam Cracker books and see if reading works for you, but if it, that doesn't work for you, that's fine too, because um, I personally watch videos, and so I use Khan Academy, and that helped me out so much. Like, I was, I was reading the books at first, and I was just like, this is just all flying over my head, but then as soon as I started watching the videos and I started taking notes in my Anki, it just clicked, like, immediately. And so, yeah, the most important thing I highly recommend you do, and I said this earlier, but I literally cannot stress this enough, is just actively read and like actively ask your questions while you're reading or watching videos so it's just not going straight over your head. I don't think that the question bank is as subjective as the content. I personally think and I know so many other people think that UWorld is literally the best resource you can have for the MCAT. And so like I just recommend that you use UWorld in conjunction with the content review because the UWorld explanations are just top tier. Like literally like they explain everything perfectly. And so like what I would do while taking UWorld tests is like every missed question, I would write it into my Anki or flashcard app or whatever you prefer. And I would just make sure that like I understood why I missed the question and then I understood also the wrong answer choices and like where I like went wrong. I think that's like another common mistake people make. They just look at the answer that is right and they don't really look at why they chose the wrong answer and like why they are continuing to choose the wrong answer when taking practice tests. Of course, after UWorld, I recommend the uh, AAMC practice test and section bank. Um, those are also highly valuable resources. I just recommend using those maybe a month away from your test date because um, you wanna save those because you wanna take them right before you take the test because they're gonna, at the end of the day, they're gonna be the most uh, similar to the test itself. And so moving on from that, I'm gonna go on how I took notes. And basically this is different for everybody. I found that my sister learns a different way. She has to handwrite her notes. Whereas like for me, I generally don't have to handwrite my notes. And I just, like I said before, I use the Anki app and I would just literally type out notes into flashcards. And so I would recommend trying it my way because I think for the MCAT, you don't really need to like know everything super, super into detail like you did while you're taking courses in school. You can instead just take the notes inside the Anki like flashcard app and you can just test yourself after. But that's also a personal opinion. I know some people, some students that tutor now, they have to take handwritten notes and they have to highlight things and like that totally works for them. They actually improve their score and so I'm just recommending it my way and try it out first and if that works for you, perfect, just continue doing that. But like if you find that you're not really retaining information the way you want to, because I realize that some people want like one fluid like comprehensive study guide. If you want that, then definitely do it that way too. Both ways work, but I just recommend trying my way out first. And yeah, so I'm gonna get into the final thing I used to uh, get my score, and I used Anki. I've said this so many times already in this video, but Anki literally was king in like all of my studying. Like, the reason why I helped out so much is because when I took my notes in the Anki cards, 
I would have to review it every single day that I did the Anki. And for those who don't know what it is, it's basically the space repetition flashcard app. And so like you can add like 20 cards in one day and then you might not even do all the cards that you added that day. You'll do like five or so. And then you do five the next day and then you do five the next day. So when I'm saying like I'm reviewing all my Anki decks, I'm not actually doing like 400 flashcards of everything I previously reviewed because that'd be crazy. I'm just doing around like 20 to 30 cards a day and like that takes me around an hour because the app is built up in a way that you have to get like the answer right twice in order for it to move on and so yeah i recommend anki i know other people use quizlet and other people use other types of flashcard apps like even just writing it out some people do that but like i highly recommend you use a flashcard so you don't end up passively reading the book and just everything flying over your head and it's just bad news. And so yeah, that's like basically the beef of the video, but I'm gonna get into also like my schedule and like what I did to create a schedule. And so I will link my schedule down below and so you, maybe you can use mine, but I just like highly recommend that you don't fall for the trap that there's only one way to get the high score. Literally so many people have different lives and like I had the fortunate opportunity to just study full time for this exam. And like, there's some people who work full time and I think either way it is possible to get a good score, but you just need to create a schedule that works for you. So if you're studying full time, you probably only need to study for like two months or so. But if you are studying like part time and you're working full time, you probably have to study a little longer. And like, that's completely fine. I'll give you an example of like my full month schedule that I use below, but like if you're part time worker, like definitely it's probably not doable. But I will also link down a part time schedule that would work for somebody who works part time and only has like say an hour to two max a day to study for the exam because let's be real here studying for this exam sucks so much and like just to talk about like what I'm gonna do for future in this channel I plan on making other helpful videos like going over like how I used Anki and going over like how I use UWorld and like going through actual MCAT passages with you but I also plan on making like educational videos like Khan Academy type esque and where I'm actually walking through like what the MCAT is gonna ask of like a kidney passage or what the MCAT is gonna ask of like electric chemistry and that stuff. So you don't have to end up wasting your time learning like all this like superfluous information that is not even really useful for the exam. And so yeah, like I'm hoping I can make this a place for just helping you get better score on the MCAT, but also like healthcare related in general. Peace.